Welcome to the Worship Center in Bryan's Road, Maryland, where Jesus is saving lives, saving souls, and saving futures. Now here's Dr. Steve Davis with wisdom tips, life treats, and gold nuggets from God's Word. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate it so much. Take the time, seek after God's Word and God's will and godly spiritual understanding in your life because that's the key to having that abundant life coming forth out of your heart like rivers of springing or living waters coming up out of your innermost being. You know, if you could just see and hear into the spirit realm, if you could see beyond the natural and into the spirit realm, you'd have so much encouragement, so much hope. Jesus said in John's Gospel, chapter 4, verse 24, that God is a spirit. God's a spirit, and he lives in the spirit realm. And in The spirit realm realm is where your hope is in Christ Jesus. That's where your hope is. It's where your strength is. It's where your victory is. It's where your power is. The spirit realm is where your healing is. Your blessings are just beyond sight, not in the natural realm, but in the spirit realm. And we have to look beyond our circumstances and look to the Lord and focus our thoughts and attentions on him and not on our situation, not on the things of this world or the systems of this world. That's one of the big mistakes that so many believers are making nowadays is getting themselves so entangled in the things and the affairs of this world and this life that they forget to serve the one who enlisted us into his service. The things that are seen, the Bible says, are temporary. Anything that you can see is temporary. It won't last forever. Your possessions, your clothes, your position, you won't have that position forever. You know, you might have just gotten some kind of major promotion and be a real big shot, but it won't be forever. Somebody somewhere is going to come and replace you in that one day. You might be all excited about some political thing that's happened or is happening and you're just so excited, but it's not forever. Whatever it is, is temporary. But the things that are not seen, the Bible says, are eternal. So as you look to the Lord, he will strengthen you and will help you to overcome those things that are trying to overcome you. As we look to the Lord and look beyond the natural and into the spirit, into the spiritual realm. Looking unto Jesus, the Bible says, the author and finisher of our faith. When you ask Jesus to come into your life, you have the greater one, the Bible says, living on the inside of you. That's 1 John 4 and verse 4. The greater one, the Holy Spirit of Jesus, comes and lives or dwells on the inside of you. And you have to acknowledge him. This is where a lot of believers miss it, is they know they have Jesus in their life. They know they have the Holy Spirit, but they don't know how to yield to him or acknowledge him or bring him up as the reality in their lives. And it's the acknowledging of him, the yielding to him, that brings those things to pass in your life that you have need of. The Bible tells us in that little book of Philemon, chapter 1 and verse 6, near the end of your Bible, and some of the newer translations have it wrong. They're not lining up with what the Greeks said. Your King James does have it. Very, very close and very right. New King James is probably pretty close there as well. And it says that by the, it's through the acknowledging, the yielding to, the good things that are in you by Christ Jesus. That's the communication of your faith, the interaction of your faith with other people, with circumstances, with your life on this earth, with the natural world. It becomes effective... It becomes effective, it takes effect, it brings changes as you acknowledge those good things that are in you by Christ Jesus, the things that he put inside of you when you gave your heart to him. And it's so incredibly important that you acknowledge or yield to Jesus. You know, it's not just about saying, oh, well, yeah, yeah, a few years ago I prayed and asked Jesus in my life. So, you know, hey, I got the heaven thing taken care of, now I'm on my own way, I'm rocking the world the way I want to now. Not at all, not at all. It's as we acknowledge or yield to Jesus on the inside, 
and then we begin to acknowledge, yield to the good things that he put on the inside of you, and you begin to acknowledge his word that you have stored up in your heart by reading it and meditating on it. You know, Jesus said that the good person, out of the good things in their heart, brings forth from the inside to the outside good things. Things, not just feelings, things. And you want to acknowledge, yield to the leading of the Holy Spirit on the inside of you and acknowledge those truths and the giftings that he's put into your heart. The solutions you need are already available in your heart. The ideas that you need, the inspired ideas that come welling up from the inside of your heart. Ideas to solve the problems you've been facing. To deal with that situation that's scaring you right now. What do you need to do? What do you need to say? And those solutions will well up inside of you and then we need to yield to them or act on them. And when you yield to, when you acknowledge, when you act on the inspired ideas that God gives you, then you begin to be a co-laborer, as we talk about a lot here, a co-laborer with God, and you begin to be a participant in the answer that God is sending into your life. Deuteronomy 8 and verse 18 says this. This is God talking, and he says, You shall not forget the Lord your God. The Lord your God. He says, Don't forget me. For he it is that gives you power. God's the one that gives you power. The ability, the inspired ideas, the resources, the skills, the talent, the opportunities to get wealth. He gives you the power to get wealth so that he may establish or make plain, make strong his covenant, his promise. And he promised to your ancestors, those that came before you, upon the earth, that he may establish it amongst you, to you, with you. God has a covenant with the earth of bringing salvation, deliverance, justice, harmony, blessing upon the earth. And he says, I will bless you with the resources you need that I can establish my covenant upon the earth. That I can bring my salvation, my forgiveness, my spiritual strength. As you begin to remember me, and act on my word. And yes, he desires to prosper you in your body, in your health, in your mind, in your emotions, in your relationships, and yes, in your finances, so that you can pay your bills and pay off those student loans and the things that seem to be completely insurmountable, increasing your income, giving you new opportunities, new inspired connections, promoting you on the job, and giving you favor with God and man. And that has always been God's plan of blessing for his people. In this passage in Deuteronomy, God is telling us that after he's helped us and blessed us, that we need to be careful not to forget God. Because it was God who gave them the power, he gives us the power to get that wealth and that strength and power, the things that we have need of. And he gave it to them so he could establish his covenant on the earth. And you know, you say, well, how could somebody forget God? I don't know. But I know this. I know that for many people, when they start off humble in their own eyes, they start off small and they're trusting God to, for help and strength and promoting them, even folks in the ministry. You know, there are people that I personally have known that started off so humble, so broken before God, so dependent upon God, and he began to bless them and enlarge them and increase them and increase their effectiveness. And before long, they just kind of became on uh, automatic pilot, you know, and then you begin finding them, you know, they've got a high profile ministry. And next thing you know, they're in trouble and the whole world knows they're in trouble. And you find out that they'd gotten away from God. And it's from this forgetting the Lord their God said he's the one that gave you power to get there in the first place. And I thank God that there's forgiveness with God. But our God is still a miracle working God. We know that God cares about people's health. That's why we pray for healing. That's why we pray to be protected. We pray for restoration. But sometimes we forget that God also cares about our finances as well. And that's why he tells us that in Deuteronomy 8 and verse 18. He says, I give you the power to get the wealth that you need. 
the wealth that you need so you can pay your rents, you can cover your bills, you can put food on the table, and the other things that you have need of. He said, I give you the power to get the money that you need to take care of the needs that you have and to be able to give and to be able to help. He said, just reach out to me for that. You know, you need to call out to him. You know, you know, many times, you know, we forget, you know, we call out for salvation. We call out for other kinds of help. And God wants us to call out when it's a financial need. He is concerned about your finances. Absolutely. You know, if it concerns you, it concerns him. And it's spiritual to say, God, I'd like to help more. I'd like to minister to people. I'd like to be a blessing to people. I'd like to be a philanthropist. And by the way, being a philanthropist, I can't even hardly say it, but to be a philanthropist is not limited to the millionaires. You know, when you give something to somebody because of your love or your commitment, that's being a philanthropist. You can do that with just a little bit. Don't wait, you know, until you, you imagine that you've got to be really wealthy to do that. You can help anybody that's in need and has less than what you have. And people need to be healed spiritually. That's called salvation. People need to be healed physically. People need to be healed in their relationships, in their homes. People need to be healed financially. People need a touch from God to move in their lives and to break off the many, many struggles and problems and hurts and pains and addictions and situations so he can flow into their lives. That's why I'm here. That's what compels me to reach those people that need a word like this from heaven. I pray every time before that camera goes on and I ask God to lead me to those people that need him, to bring this word to someone that says, I need a word from God. I need a word for my situation. And I pray for you. I pray for you. God said in Psalms, 32 verse 8. These are, these are definitely verses worth highlighting. So you can come back later and meditate on them. God says this, I will instruct you and teach you in the way which you shall go. And I love this. He said, and I will guide you with my eye. God said, I will teach you. That's the Holy Spirit teaching you. He said, I will guide you. I will nudge you. I will direct you by my spirit, give you that that gut feeling, you ought to do something, that nudging, the way you should go. So he said, I'm teaching you. That's one way I'll guide you. A second way, by my leading, by my nudging you, by my guiding you. He said, then I'll guide you with my eye. I love that. I used to have a boss that people thought was very hard to work with. They said, you know, he has all these expectations. One day I discovered, quite by accident, that he liked to teach us what we should do and kind of give us a little bit of a hint at what we should do. But his number one thing, he would guide us with his eyes. Meaning, you know, you could come into the room and say, hey, how are you doing? And he would say hi. And he would glance over towards something, maybe a chair. If you wanted me to sit down, you know, he'd glance at a chair, go like that, I'd sit down. And then he might glance at something there on the little end table by the chair. Like that, somebody would come in, he might gesture with his eyes, might look at me, look at them, meaning get up and go see them or say something to them. Or sometimes I'd start to get up and he would look at them, he'd look at me and he'd just go like that, meaning, you know, just stay out of it. And I thought later, that's what God does if we look at him. He'll guide us with his eye. We are focused on him in the spirit realm. And as you get familiar with what God says about you in your situation, you discover his promises and it begins to break those strongholds in your thinking that the enemy has used all your life to keep you under and hold you back. Your faith, the Bible says in Hebrews 11 and verse 1, is the substance of the things you're hoping for, believing God for it. It's the evidence of things you haven't seen yet in the natural realm, like I mentioned earlier. And as you act on your faith, it establishes that substance of that situation, of that blessing, of that miracle that you're hoping for, that you desire, but you haven't seen yet. That's Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. He said, currently, the things you're hoping for, he said, they're, they exist in the realm of faith, and they're brought from the, nat the spiritual into the natural as you act on them. God didn't create us to go out and chase miracles. A lot of people have the mistake thinking, 
You know, oh, there's going to be a miracle meeting, a miracle conference, a miracle crusade. I've got to go there and get my miracle. God never created us to chase miracles. He created us to follow him. And then, like Jesus said, when we walk in faith, when we're walking in obedience, then those signs, the wonders, the miracles will follow after us. In other words, you have to get your priority. If you're following the miracles, you have it backwards. Follow Jesus and walk in him. That's an answer for someone. Follow Jesus and walk in him, and the miracles are coming in behind you. And part of my job as a pastor, as a teacher of God's word, as a mentor, part of my job is to teach you the word of God, to bring it to you plainly, simply, in a way that you can understand it, that you can act on it, so that you can believe it, and that you can receive it. And my responsibility before the Lord is to keep bringing you his word over and over and over. And I'm liking that I'm hearing from people. They're getting a greater appetite for God's word. You know, at first they're like, oh, it's too many scriptures, too much word. Just give us, I don't know, some stories or something. And now I have people saying, no, nope, you've really helped me build my appetite for the word. And I'm getting to understand how the verses work together, spiritual things with spiritual things. And these truths that are brought together, finally making some sense feeding my inner man. And God is telling me to pray for you, keep bringing you this word, keep reminding you what he says, and to get it deep down into your spirit, man, where you can meditate on it and you can feed on it until it becomes a part of you and until it becomes a mighty, powerful force in your life. That's what we want. It has to be stored up in your heart so that you don't forget what the Lord gives you, the power and the strength so that you can get what you need. It's not storing it in your head. It's storing it in your heart. It's like this. If you play music, you're a musician or singer. In the beginning, you may take, take a piece of music if you read music. And if you don't, you know, well, I don't really read music, but you know, I can read all my chords and stuff like that. But you might have to take it, you know, or the words... And at first, maybe, you know, look at them on your phone and, you know, you're reading them over and over again. And I was playing some music somewhere the other night, you know, and I pretty much knew the words. But I was thinking, well, I don't know, you know, if I'm up there in front of people, I might forget. So then I had them up on my phone. And I thought, mm, that's pretty good, but maybe not good enough. So I kind of went out the back and found a piece of paper and found a piece of tape. And I wrote down the parts of the words I wasn't very sure of and then tape them to the top of my guitar so just in case I couldn't remember them, I could glance down and catch them. But I kept going over them in my mind and thank the Lord that when it was time to be playing and being there in front of the mic, I didn't have to look down because I had the words in my heart. And Rick, who plays along with me, plays harmonica, you know, he said, wow, he said, how'd you do that? He said, you know, you didn't have the words right. He said, I knew you didn't have them before we got up there, but he says, you had them all of a sudden. And I said, well, you know what I did? I got them on my phone. I wrote them out by hand. I looked at them and looked at them until I got them into my heart. And then it was automatic when it was time to do them. And that's the way God's word works. You have to read it first. Get it into your heart until it becomes automatic. It becomes automatic. And then it comes out at the time that you need it and you won't forget it. The health that you need, the energy you need, the wealth that you need, that position you need, all of those things as you store up his word in your heart are used for him to establish his covenant with you. And then the Holy Spirit will work with the word of God that you're being taught and he'll keep bringing it back to your mind so that you can break off those limiting habits from maybe how you were raised or some bad things that happened to you or you just got believing negative stuff and limitations on your habits. Jesus said that the Holy Spirit, our comforter, our teacher, will teach us and bring these things back up from our heart to our minds so we can act on them. Listen to what Jesus said in John 14 and verse 26. He said, the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, in the name of Jesus, 
He said, he shall teach you all things and will bring all things to your remembrance. Your remembrance. That word that you've stored in your heart, he'll bring it up to your mind. He's all the things that I said to you. The Holy Spirit is sent to us by the Father. He is sent in Jesus' name and he teaches us. He teaches you these truths from God's word and then he brings them to your remembrance when you need them. I had to learn very early on that when I read and feed on my Bible, I've got it on my devices, but I, I like this one too. I like every way possible to get the word of my heart. I like to listen to it. I like to read it. I like to, to teach it. I like to speak it. I like to memorize it. But I found that when I would read and feed on my Bible, these truths of my Bible, I would see clearer and clearer. And the Holy Spirit would point things out to me. And I began to discover that God wants to break the curse off of humanity. He wants us to love him and serve him and live in harmony with each other, to live in health, to break off the plagues and the diseases, to bring us abundance. And when you start hearing God speaking to you through the teaching and you're listening to the word of God, faith comes in your heart. And when faith comes, you start recognizing the greater one on the inside of you and you begin to acknowledge the good things that are in you by Christ Jesus. Philemon 1 in verse 6. I was reading, back in here, I was reading where Moses was raised up by God to lead his people, the children of Israel. And he was raised by God to lead them out of slavery and out of bondage that they were in in Egypt. And as long as the children of Israel followed God in obedience, they lived under his provision, under his strength, and under his protection. But when they tried to go and cut God out of their thinking and tried to live on their own ideas and their own strength, and their own plans, they would lose his provision and his protection. And every time they forgot God, they lost the protection that comes from walking with God. Every time. But every time they would turn away from their sins and repent, God would bless them and provide for them abundantly and protect them from their enemies. Christians, you, me, need to start walking in faith, talking in faith, bringing people the word of God, sharing with people, opening doors, find any way you can to bring them the word of God. That's one reason I'm so, so strong by the spirit of God to tell you don't get divisive over so many of the things that perish with this world. If there's going to be any offense in what you or I bring, let it be the gospel. Not my tastes in music or clothes or politics or any of the other things of this world or my preference for a particular TV channel over another one, that's not worth losing an audience with somebody that the Lord has sent you to. We have to be renewed in the spirits of our mind and we need to get the word of God to people. You can share this message. That's, it doesn't get any easier than that to pray and ask the Lord, who do I know that needs to hear this message and share that message with them? It doesn't get any easier than that. There's never been a time in history when you could reach as many people as easily as there is today. Subscribing is important, liking, getting the notifications, that's important, and sharing is so important because our world is being robbed. Nation after nation is being robbed and destroyed by evil thinking, corruption, hatred, racism, injustice, destruction, spirits of destruction. People are so desperate. They're so desperate, so scared. Their hope has been taken away from them. And we've got this message that's eternal. 
As it says in 1 Corinthians 13, faith, hope, people need hope. People need faith and charity. Actually loving other people, even those that are different than you and believe different than you or vote different than you, to love them instead of looking down on them. There's no other answer than start finding out what God says. See, when the world can press you into its mold that somebody that has different ideas from you is your enemy, he turns your mission field into your enemies, you'll never reach them. Your mission field is not your enemy. Your mission field is the people God has put you in contact with. And God has a place for you. He's got a place where his blessings are flowing in your life, a place where he has planned for you with the equipping he's given you, the experience he's given you, the knowledge he's given you, a place that he has prepared for you that he's prepared you for, and a place where you and God are walking together and his hand is on your life and his provision is flowing and where you have the joy of the Lord as your strength. And I pray that you'll find that place and walk in it every day and know the blessing of that in Jesus' name. Thank you for giving me this time to speak some good things from the Word of God into your life. God bless you and remember to share this message. We hope you were blessed, inspired, and challenged by what you heard today. And we pray that God spoke some inspired truths into your heart. This ministry is supported by your gifts and donations. If you'd like to help us spread the good news, you can give at our website, www.theworshipcenter.org. Or you can text to give at 301-637-0777. It's easy and takes only seconds to set up. Thank you for listening and God bless you and your family.